Overall, I think the new Marshall Monitor 2 ANCs are a great pair of headphones. But I specifically think these are a great option for commuters if you can even leave the house. But today we're going to see how the Monitor 2 stack up against the Sony 1000XM3s and the Bose NC700s. Now, I know that with this current quarantine, all of this uncertainty, and with how the economy currently is, buying a new pair of premium ANC headphones might not be on the top of everybody's list. But <laughs> with us being stuck in the house all day uh, with family, some people might be looking for a way to escape for a little bit. So maybe they might be interested in investing in a pair of ANC headphones. So with that being said, the Bose NC700s are the most expensive pair of headphones here, retailing for $400, and the Monitor 2s retail for $320. But now, I want to adjust the Sony 1000XM3's price. These headphones have a retail price of $350, but they're typically on sale for $278 these days because we know the Sony 1000XM4s are right around the corner, which you can learn more about here. But with our current global health situation, I wouldn't be surprised one bit if they end up getting delayed. So ultimately, I do think that picking up the 1000XM3s today is a real coin toss because I do think the 1000XM4s are worth waiting for. But regardless, the 1000XM3s are a steal at their $278 sale price. So if you want to pick any of the headphones up mentioned in this video, they'll all be linked down below. So first off, let's go over cases. Both the Bose NC700 and Sony 1000XM3s come included with hard shell carrying cases, whereas the Marshalls come included with a carrying pouch. Now, like I've said in the past, whenever you're paying upwards of $300 for a pair of headphones, a hard shell case is to be expected. So personally, I am a little disappointed in Marshall here. But you probably don't even need a case since you're cooped up in the house all day anyways. But what I really like about the Marshalls is their build quality and design. I really like Marshalls classic design, but the main reason why I like them so much is because they're so low profile. Whereas the Bose NC700s look elegant, but their super round headband just makes it look like you're wearing a helmet. But then there are the Sonys which do have a more low profile headband, which I like, but their ear cups do pop out a little more compared to the Marshalls. Now, when it comes to build quality, all of these headphones are decent, but objectively, the Sonys do feel the cheapest here. They're mostly made out of plastic, and the leatherette on these ear pads feel the most synthetic. But something that I have noticed recently is that when I extend their headband, I do feel the clicking mechanism is starting to wear out and feel a little loose. Now granted, this is after a year and a half of heavy usage because these are my daily drivers and I also extend the headband on these headphones quite a lot for these reviews in general. So I did want to point that out. But then there are the Bose NC700s which also have decent build quality. But what really make them stand out here is how luxurious their leatherette feels. The synthetic leatherette on the Bose is second only to the real sheepskin leather ear pads found on the Sennheiser Momentum 3s. And then what makes the Marshalls stand out here is their durability compared to these other two headphones. Even though these headphones don't come included with a hard shell case, I don't think they need them because they're just so freaking rugged. But all of that ruggedness does come with a price regarding fit and comfort. Now, these headphones are comfortable to wear and they're big head approved, but they're also pretty heavy and noticeable, weighing in at 320 grams. Whereas the Bose NC700s weigh in at 263 grams and the Sony's weigh in at 255 grams. And usually, lighter headphones are more comfortable than heavier ones. But more importantly, let's talk about the ear pads on these headphones. The Sony's do have the most cramped ear pads here. Even though these ear pads fit me just fine, if you have larger ears or ears that stick out a lot, then these ear pads might rest on your ears. Whereas the Bose have the most spacious ear pads here, and they should be able to fit all ear types with no problem. 
and the Marshalls are a nice middle ground here. They're more spacious than the Sonys, but they might not fit extra large ears or ears that stick out a lot like the Bose can. But something that I do gotta point out about the Bose is that they have the most clamping force here. They're not gonna squeeze your head like the Beats Solo Pro do, but if you have a larger head like I do, then you might think they're a little tight. Personally, I think the Sonys are the most comfortable headphones here, but depending on your head shape or ear type, you might be better off with either the Bose or Marshall. Now, when it comes to tech specs, all three of these headphones charge via a USB-C port, and they all have decent battery lives. The Bose NC700s are good for 20 hours, whereas both of these Sonys and Marshalls are good for 30 hours. But if you're looking for the pair of headphones here with the longest battery life, then you might be interested in the Marshalls because these headphones can go for as long as 45 hours with their ANC turned off. Now, for those wondering, unfortunately, you can't use the USB-C port on any of these headphones as a wired connection, like with, let's say, the Sennheiser Momentum 3s or even the Bowers Wilkins PX7s. If you want to use a wired connection with any of these headphones, you gotta use the aux jack. Now, when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity, all of these headphones are perfectly fine for watching movies or videos on your phone, because they all have a zero latency across the board, whether you're using an iPhone or Android device. The only thing that I do want to point out here is that unfortunately, the Sonys can only be connected to one device at a time. Which not only sucks, but I do think it's ridiculous at this point, because both the Bose NC700s and Marshalls can be connected to two devices at the same time. So you can easily hot swap from your phone to your computer, which is always great for power users. Now, when it comes to listening to music with these headphones, the Sonys are the crowd pleasers here. Since these headphones have a fully customizable EQ, you can make them sound however you want. If you like a neutral sound signature, you can do that, or if you like a bass heavy sound signature, you can also do that. And when you turn the bass up on these headphones, they're going to rattle your head a decent amount. So if you like to physically feel your music, then the Sonys are the safe bet here. Whereas both the Bose and Marshalls are better gears towards people who prefer a neutral sound signature. Both the Bose and Marshall sound better than the Sonys because they both have a wider soundstage and better instrument separation, but the bass on both of these headphones is purely audible. This is why some people say that they don't like Bose's headphones because they sound flat, but in reality it's because they're not rattling their heads. So with that being said, the Bose do sound better than the Sonys and they sound very balanced and they're a very good middle ground when compared to the Marshalls because the Marshalls put more of an emphasis on vocalist when they're set to their stock EQ. But the thing the Marshalls have going for them is that even though they are a pair of neutral sounding headphones, they also have a fully customizable EQ, unlike the Bose and C700s. But even though these headphones do have a fully customizable EQ like the Sonys, unlike the Sonys, they still don't physically rattle your head, even if you were to raise the bass on them all the way up. So, like I said earlier, the Sonys are the crowd pleasers here because they should satiate most people. But if you want better detail and a wider sound stage, then both the Bose and Marshalls are better options sound quality wise. Now, when it comes to you actually controlling your music, both the Sonys and Bose are using touchpads. Now, even though both of these touchpads are easy to use and they're very accurate, I gotta admit that using Marshall's physical control knob is just easier and more direct. So, if you just don't want to deal with the touchpad at all, then you could just go with the Marshalls. But now, let's talk about the active noise cancellation on these headphones, because like I mentioned earlier, during this quarantine time, you might want to either block out your family members for a little bit, or you just want to block out the kids from the apartment two units down. Long story short, Sony 1000 XM3's claim to fame is that they have the best performing active noise cancellation on the market, but so that you can see for yourself, we're going to jump into an ANC test. Thank you. 
So, like you may have just seen, even though the Bose NC700 come close to blocking out the same amount of noise as the Sony 1000 XM3s, the Sonys still block out a touch more road noise, and more importantly, a touch more chatter which is what I think you'll be more interested in during this quarantine. But more importantly, the Sonys block out the most amount of noise here and they do so with the least amount of cabin pressure. Whereas the Bose have a little more cabin pressure than the Sonys but just by a little bit. Whereas with the Marshalls, clearly they block out the least amount of noise here by comparison but they also have the most amount of cabin pressure. I regularly find myself having to pop my ears whenever I'm using the Marshalls to either edit a video or when I'm watching something on my phone. So for that reason, I only like to use the active noise cancellation on the Marshalls when I have to. Whereas with both the Bose or Sony, I don't have to pop my ears even when I'm not playing music through them. So, if you're looking for the best active noise cancellation here to isolate yourself, then the Sonys are clearly the best option here. Now, when it comes to the ambient mode, all three of these headphones have a very good ambient mode. They all sound natural, there's no hissing in the background, they all do a good job of blocking out wind noise and they're all adjustable, so you can specify how much ambient noise you want to let in. But personally, I do think the Sonys have the best ambient mode here because their ambient mode is active, meaning that they actively block out sudden spikes in loud noises. Like, let's say your dog starts barking while you're wearing these headphones. The ambient mode on the Sonys will automatically stop, thus saving you from having this amplified bark playing through your headphones and saving you from sudden jump scares. But something that I do wish Sony would change on their headphones is their quick attention. On the Sonys, if you completely cover their touchpad, they'll lower the volume of your music and let in all of the ambient sound, so that you can quickly talk to someone without having to take your headphones off, like this. But the thing is, you gotta keep your hand here like an idiot the entire time you're talking. Sony should make it that if you keep the touchpad covered for over two and a half seconds, they'll lock to quick attention mode, and then when you touch the touchpad again, they'll resume playing. Cause both the Bose and Marshall do the same thing, but they don't require you to keep your hand on an ear cup like this. <laughs> So yeah, I do think Sony could fix how quick attention is activated on their headphones through a software update. But this now leads us to the microphone test. And unfortunately, the microphone on the Sony's is the worst here. It just sounds very muffled. Whereas the Marshalls sound much better and they really do a really good job of putting your voice front and center. My only critique is that it might sound a little staticky in the background, but nonetheless, I do think that the microphone on the Marshalls is usable for phone calls. But if you plan on making a lot of phone calls with your headphones, either because you're working from home or because you're just going to be calling family, then the Bose NC700 are the way to go here because these headphones have the best sounding microphone on, I want to say, any pair of headphones. I've tested a lot and I haven't found a single pair that beat the Bose NC700s when it comes to microphone call quality. Except for AirPods, but I do think that's a little different. But overall, if you're looking for a pair of headphones to block out the most amount of noise here to help you during this quarantine, then the Sony 1000 XM3s are still the best option here, especially at their $278 sale price. The only wild card here is that the Sony 1000 XM3s could be right around the corner, or they could not be, I really don't know. So this could be something to take into consideration if you don't want to suffer from buyer's remorse. But if you want something with better sound quality, then both the Bose and Marshall are better options. Now, if you want something with better noise cancellation, then the Bose are better than the Marshalls. Or, if you want to save some money, or if you want to have some control over how your headphones sound, then the Marshalls are the way to go.
but keep in mind they do have some noticeable cabin pressure. But at the end of the day, no matter which headphones you decide to go with, remember stay safe and wash your hands. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit that like button and get subscribed. It helps out more than you realize. If you want to pick any other products up mentioned in this video, those will be linked in the description down below, and you can also support the channel by checking out the merch store. But other than that, I'll catch you next time.